Is deconstruction dead? Was it ever alive? These are the questions discussed in Barbara Johnson's The Wake of Deconstruction. The book is a compilation of Barbara Johnson's Bucknell Lectures in Literary Theory. The first lecture is titled Double Mourning and the Public Sphere. Death and Exhumation, No Less Than Memory and Rewriting, or recurring concerns in this lecture. The lecture is organized around two double deaths, the posthumous revelations about Paul Dayman's politics and the murder of feminist law professor Mary Jo Frug, who was then viciously caricatured by students at the Harvard Law School a year after her death. Johnson argues that not even death brings an end to difference. Deconstructive reading and political critique analyze social and intellectual phenomena with concepts of meaning effects and agency effects that do not necessarily coincide with the concept of meaning and agency as individual intention. However, Johnson sees a further similarity between the cases of Dayman and Frug. In their arrogance and precautious sense of entitlement, Damon and the students who parodied Frug's work and murder failed to imagine themselves in the place of the violated other. In her second lecture, Women and Allegory, Johnson personifies deconstruction by considering allegorical representations of theory as a woman. She begins this project with a discussion of Reynolds' painting of theory with the motto, Theory is the knowledge of what is truly nature. Johnson uncovers the intertextual relations between Reynolds' painting, Damon's discourse on eloquence and the epistemology of metaphor, and Derrick Bell's allegorical text, And We Are Not Saved, published in 1987. Johnson explains how the difference between symbol and allegory in rhetorical theory has important and unavoidable consequences for identity politics and legal discourse. Identity politics, so mocked and maligned in the press, is the translation of the structure of allegory into the reconstruction of the social text. She reminds that women are still condemned to wear the veil of allegory when they enter the public sphere and even then they are likely to be subject to misogynistic parody. In both the lectures, Johnson criticizes the conception of language as the expression of conscious individual intentions. This univocal model, she argues, involves a disregard for the systematic, ideological and linguistic forces that authorize and engender text. Deconstruction and political criticism show how meanings and intentions are generated or undercut by language or culture.